Mic check and screen share check, please. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate your patience. I was finishing up a coaching session uh, with uh, one of my one of my uh, mentors and VIP clients. Uh, so this is the uh, r result of uh, his 15-minute lesson on the sniper trade and the two-hour battle drill that my brother has put together. Uh, he gave my uh, mentor 15 minutes of instruction. He's a very experienced money manager. He understood it. He traded it all day, netted 5000 bucks and wrote my brother a check for 1000 bucks for uh, the coaching session. And I just reviewed how that session went with my mentor because we're evaluating my brother's ability to coach and mentor. Uh, seems to be doing okay. Uh, this is the same trade I took today in CLF. Uh, the metals were geared and poised to move. They did. Um, he played the uh, Kata 2, added two or added a position at the 2R battle drill, added another position with 2R in hand, another position, and then took the standard exit just before lunch, and then after lunch took the Collapsing Dragon for another 1.5. Um, uh, now my mentor and I have been trading this certain technique on, uh, longer term trades. This is, uh, uh, taking a look at the growth fund of America on monthly charts. Uh, part of his conservative, uh, portfolio management requires him to stay in positions for a long time. And this turns out to be a pretty nice way to do some, um, almost like a blended monthly rebalancing or longer term swing trading. And he's using this for his clients. Um, he, uh, he's doing pretty good for himself in, in the business. He's in his 36th year of pro money management. Uh, it takes an account of 5 million bucks to schedule an office call with him. Uh, but you can learn the things he's learning, uh, right in here. I just appreciate his friendship and mentorship over the years. Um, and uh, we're trading in memory of uh, the great one, uh, Robert Gardner. May he rest in peace. Um, my sniper trade of the day was in uh, SPY. And uh, this was my trade. Let's see where my the magic pen is. So here's the, uh, you know, we're on three minutes with SPY. Uh, here was the close. Today was the gap down, uh, which gapped down to here. Here's the opening range three, that first candle. Uh, a couple bars later, it opens, so I'm long, looking to get back to this price cluster. It immediately fails for a one-hour loss. Uh, the RL10 bottoms out, it crosses the baby dragon, enters the dragon, leaves the dragon, hits the PSR, so we hit a standard entry, standard risk box. This is the 2R, automatic add. Uh, here was the R10 wiggle. Uh, here's the next 2R, that's an automatic add. It reverses and flips, automatic exit. So this first position earned 2, 3.5 on the first one, and this one earned 1.5, and this one was down uh, down 1 because we had 3, uh, well, down a half because we had one position on there. So that was uh, 4.5 on that one. Uh, here's the collapsing dragon, PSR flip. Uh, there's two R, so we add one. There's another uh, half an R on this one and another half an R on that on the first one. So that's three R. Uh, this one was a scratch. And this one earned about one R. So that's uh, 8.5 in the S&P. 
which trades identical to the ES futures contract for those of you out there slinging money in the futures. So that's 8.5R. If 2022 isn't your best year for trading, then we've got some work to do. Um, here's the uh, market 150. Um, so we're looking back 30 days, 60 days, 90, 120, 150. Uh, we've put in that double bottom recently. Uh, this nice little move has now gotten past the previous R10 uh, peak. And this came up and tested, uh, at the ten, made a new 10-day high yesterday, couldn't hold, and sold off to here. So we're still in the bottom one-third of the long-term look back, uh, starting to be in a position where we got to be concerned about the, the fail back to 370, which would be normal behavior in a bear market. Uh, let's remember that we are in a bear market. Uh, on the daily 30-day uh, 30, 30 chart, I want to zoom in and take a look uh, closely at today's price action on the daily bar. This is what is concerning me right now. So I'm isolating just kind of the last 10 days. So we've had a nice move off this double bottom. Uh, here's where it broke through the piece are. So you get this leg one, pause, hold support at the dragon. Leg two makes a new 10-day high uh, last uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, I mean, that was all uh, guns and roses right there, ready to go. Today it gapped down a little bit, ran higher for a moment. New 10-day high, all is well. And then closed in the bottom of the range for a negative day over day close and this almost feels like a shooting star because it came all the way back and that means nobody was willing to hold that overnight uh, that's everybody that wants to preserve this pretty good run of three days from 363 to about 382 which is about a 20 dollar move that's about six and a half percent and this is a sign of weakness right here so uh here's the two the two day low the edge of the dragon spine of the dragon lower skin of the dragon five day low belly of the dragon tomorrow the pisar is going to be right about here right around 360 and uh that's the support level at the R10s. And so that's your price ladder on the way down. I want you to think of those as trip wires or safety nets for this mountain climber that's that's been trying to climb his way up the mountain. Uh, and so those are pieces of protection um, that can preserve profits that you earned on this long, hard climb. Where do you want to put your stuff? I mean, you could even argue for the bottom of the today's range. Uh, so it, it's that's where you're getting paid to be professional in your orientation is your exit management strategy. Finding the entries is easy. The next nine or ten decisions are all about how to manage those stops and and how to get out. Here's our 30-minute chart in 10 days. So this this is really, uh, here's today's price move. So this is that nice three-day run-up, the little gap down, peaks, and so a perfect parabola that closed very weakly compared to the open. So even on the 30-minute, you get the PSAR flip. And uh, that's the kind of trends you can get even on the 30-minute PSAR. So there's every reason to believe this could come back and visit, say, 375 tomorrow. All it's got to do is the same thing that it did today, and it's back down to here, 
and then it's back into this congestion zone starting around 372 and lasting to about 365. And if that breaks, look out below. This is a bear market. For those of you keeping score at home. Here's today's sector performance as we start getting our tactical mind right. So we'll start with the S&P. <clears throat> minus 0.75 in the S&P. The Qs were weaker at minus 2.2. Uh, diamonds were stronger, basically flat. There's your cut line between plus and minus. Uh, the Russell was up 0.5. Treasuries were up 1.5. Emerging markets were best at 1.64. Uh, Tesla had a pretty good day at 1.0 even. Um, But this is troublesome. The broad market sold off hard. The tech leadership sold off hard. So some of that discretionary money is leaving, uh, is not sticking around to find out what's going to happen. I think they know how this is. I think they think they know how this is going to end. All right, let's look at the underperformers to be mindful of where the weakness was today in case we see weakness tomorrow. Here's the S&P, again, 0.75. Consumer discretionary, the FANGs off 2%. Discretionary is off 0.8. Uh, the two techs off 2 and a quarter. Brazil, 2.35. Uh, and VXX off 2.3. So that's the anomaly. You know, today's weakness was not reflected in people paying up to get portfolio insurance. So that tells me that if it goes down tomorrow, there's going to be some surprise people. That actually leads to bigger moves if it decides to collapse tomorrow. So I'm going to be watching for that. All right, individual companies. Uh, Microsoft, a disappointing 7.7. .7. Ouch. Uh, NVIDIA, Texas Instruments. So let's take a look at our semis. There's NVIDIA, 2.65 and 2.75 in there for uh, Texas Instruments and NVIDIA. And then Intel. Um, Intel was relatively better, only down 0.73. So there's our semiconductor cluster looking very weak and part of the reason that uh, technology was down because of our weakness in tech leaders in uh, semiconductor leaders um, but old reliables like Microsoft and Apple got punished today Coinbase and PayPal in the uh, financial disruptors so some key leaders uh, were under pressure today gotta believe that's uh, that could easily continue tomorrow. To the upside, here's the S&P. So we've got marijuana, agriculture, commercial real estate, um, losing less, and but still underwater. Here's our cut line. On the upside, you got lumber, real estate, arc innovation, finance, the other lumber, clean energy, all between zero and 0 0.3. Uh, then you got consumer staples, materials in Mexico, up to 0 0.8. Aussie dollar, lithium, 1.4. Oil exploration, 1.5. Biotech, blended commodities, uranium, so the market of things doing well. Uh, wheat and precious metals, 2.36.
Bitcoin 2.4, Arc Genomics, Oil and Ethereum doing best of all at 7%, 3.3, and 2.8. Uh, let's look at our metals, which were poised after last week's losses to move. There's Cliff, and there's Alcoa and U.S. Steel. Why do I follow the metals? Uh, because of reasons. Um, 2.4 to 3.2. So when the market is rolling over, but XLB is up and the metals are all better than XLB, that's where I'm looking tomorrow. That's where I'm looking. There's either going to be more momentum being added to the gains that were made, or there's selling pressure and people are going to try to preserve those gains. So either way, those things have a, are postured to make large moves tomorrow. That's exactly what we want in a compound critical state. And the rest of it is simple preparation and rehearsal. Yeah, the intraday move in U.S. Steel and Cliff was uh, a 6% intraday move. I've got a, a lot of catching up to do on uh, the trades from yesterday. I didn't have time to uh, to debrief them. And so I want to knock out the uh, daily report quick uh, and then spend a little more time on the uh, on the daily traders. So for those of you who are just waiting for the reports, we'll get that knocked out. Dashboard one. Uh, bear normal. The oversold condition got smashed today back to 38. Uh, the warning lights are flashing for short trades on the overreaction system for the U.S. diamonds, mid caps, and small caps, and the European 350. So that's just a warning. And we're not out of the woods on the risk Z which says, yep, we're poised for large moves in either direction when it departs the zero line. Now, the last two times when it got back to the zero line, there was a continuation to the upside. So there could still be some of that. But that just means that uh, ideal condition for short-term swing trading, like that 30-minute chart, that's how you do it. What are my eyes drawn to? That quite a lot of the Dow members made significant breakouts on the NDXs, like the energy sectors, Chevron, um, DuPont and Goldman in, in uh, finance and materials, consumer staples like Coke, J.P. Morgan, and uh, Johnson & Johnson. That's a finance, J.P. Morgan. Pfizer and healthcare, Visa and financial services, Walmart and Staples. No tech names there. And the move of the last five or eight days has been so strong that nobody's testing out well on the auto framer, conspicuous by its absence. That means the easier money has already been made. There already is a stretch. And when you are stretched off the bottom in a bear market, that is why you're getting a lot of these warning signs flashing about the possibility of big sell-off followed by a nice 6 to 8% move. And now what's it going to do? Second leg up, or is it roll over like it does in a bear market quite often? And now go make a triple bottom back around 355 or 360. That's why we played a game. ETF 30. Uh, again, tons of breakouts on the ones that made money today, but very few things still have any stretch left in them uh, for the swing trade. And there's plenty of warning signs flashing for the possibility of dead cat bounces. Uh, notice that it's very narrowly focused elements like oil, 
health care making gains and it's the broad index leaders like the like tech and then big indexes like Latin America and Brazil were weak so narrowly focused uh, outperformance and broad market weakness that's a recipe for more bear bearish selling only three in the auto framer treasuries Brazil and Latin America uh, only a few squeezes squeezes Goldman United Health diamonds are pretty good SPY's not bad on the little squeeze that just means it hasn't hit the panic selling yet but you get another day like today of disappointment and it could accelerate easily so just a couple Godzillas to look at in the S&P uh, Google is a uh, raging Godzilla because he's green and green on the one day and five day volatility nothing in our tactical symbol set Uh, I am looking at the one day movers today. You had a seven sigma move, six and a half, five and a half, almost five in Boeing. Wow. Texas Instruments, that's, that's a nice one. Semis were weak today, and that's a big downward move. Uh, market leader in tech, Oracle, on a five day and a one day move there's visa and the Google looking for easy ones uh, and then in the most volatiles I'm looking for the ones that are double green because they are enraged and moving hard there's that seven Sigma move in AIZ again Uh, standard auto framer stats for those of you swing trading one day at a time. Here's the tactical symbol set. Again, what immediately leaps out at me are my old reliables right there. The top five at an extreme condition for five day volatility. And the reason I love me some Cliff, he's already got a nice one day uh, large volatile move and I'm expecting more of that soon there's Texas Instruments emerging markets arc genomics all participating in the big the big move now and in a bear market when there's a lot of things that are in the summer and spring that's ripe for more disappointment and that's where the you know the shock and awe of a bear is that everybody thinks it's all okay hey it's summer and spring yeah that's when the bear wakes up and he's hungry um, multi time frame NDX had a mix of losers today still some residual strength in the energy sector which didn't even notice that the market was down today there's oil exploration energy You can't hide from the NDX. It will find you if you have strength or extreme weakness. And Boeing and Microsoft, big losers today, sort of demands demands that we look at them. shift to my S&P 500 look holy Santa Maria uh, somebody was asking me the other day if you know why I'm interested in the 30-minute charts it seems like it's too slow to day trade and too fast to swing trade to which I would say uh, Boeing 
you can enjoy all the kata twos that you want all the way up. And when you get the peace or flip after an especially nice move, that's a one day move with an entry around, call it 145 and closed at 133. That's a $12 loss on 108. That's a minus 8%. All down. Yeah, but what if you had a little more time to spend on it and you wanted to just use three minute charts? This is just going to make this is going to make an old fat man cry, I can bet. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, find the movers, anyone? So there's a PSR flip. Recovery. It rejects the PSR here. It does not go. So it rolls over. You can get a Kata 2 there or a collapsing dragon there and say, hold on for dear life. After those are, that's about a 2R add, a 2R add, and a 2R add. Yeah, find the movers. Think that's going to be in play tomorrow? Let's see what he looks like on our, yeah. Yeah, here's one where it was, um, Enjoying the uh, enjoying the the nice the nice drive in the country gaps up makes a new ten day high comes back is now negative for the day breaks below yesterday's low hits the dragon spine of the dragon lower skin of the dragon hits the PSR whoosh the one day range is the size of the five day range which is two-thirds of the 10-day range. And uh, where does it go from here if it's on the way down? Uh, here. Five-day low, 10-day low. And if it breaks here, look out below. Find the movers. Yeah, so I, I want you to notice on the screen what I have over here. That's on my trading screen. So I'm looking at percent changes as they're changing during the day and looking for things that are doing extremely well or extremely poorly. Or the TC2000 bundle, which has all the rule sets for our intraday and swing trade patterns, and they automatically fire green when the rules and the criteria are hit. So you can then just, you can see them on the watch list and the performance list and then dial down and trade them on the tactical frame. Find the movers. Yeah, this just feels like this nice smiley face here is ready to disappoint, just like it did here. That's the pessimist in me. It's gotten quite a distance away from its from its 10-day moving average, and it worked its way all the way back to uh, to the zero line on slope. And so this could easily do that. This is a natural resistance point, so that could roll over. Just playing scenarios in my head, taking care of risk. Uh, so here's Griff Cooper, and uh, he and Phil have put together a really nice course on the Kata 2 Challenge and uh, the Applied System Development course, showing how to use my system design guidance to build a personally adaptive 
system step by step and the one that Griff is using as the example to show how those principles work is the Kata 2 challenge, which he took religiously for about nine months uh, until he mastered those three basic patterns using Brazil uh, every day. Uh, and so this is his live three minute on the TF that nets him 1%. And the Russell was up for the day, but he made bank on the short side with a PSR flip, Z3 pinch breakdown, standard risk, standard exit for plus one. KBH. Yeah on the collapse when it goes from spring to winter or when it goes from fall to winter and that little congestion breaks you're supposed to take that griff come on man come on man and then exit here and then piece our flip in the usual way standard risk to the bottom of the stack gets paid 0.65 Here's, this is yesterday in the Aussie. Now, I'm going to ask uh, Luke why this looks so different than the normal chart. It looks like there was some kind of crazy volatility going on in there. The bars look an awful lot bigger than I'm normally used to seeing. Uh, was that your experience, or is it just a matter of scale on the chart? Not sure what's going on here. Ah, okay. I right, CPI announcements. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Uh, that's hard to trade in there. Um, but it looks to me like you had some opportunities. Maybe to be a little quicker on the, on the trigger. Like I don't think. I don't think we should have let that one, we should not have let that one scratch. This one's pretty good. You had to resist the urge to get short again until it got all the way down here and out of beyond the Z3 probably. Uh, and then there's our stop and reverse. You were probably just emotionally agitated by that point. Yeah. Looks like you got whipsawed a couple times in here. And that one was really quick, hard to get out of. This looks like the an anomaly of the uh, CPI to me. Uh, Woj in uh, Devon Energy, I think, is this yesterday? Yeah, this is yesterday. Um, we might have reversed here. On a one, two, three, good scratches, and just not much available. Uh, you're supposed to tell us when you go to meetings because there's Kata twos galore all the way up yesterday. Uh, this one is, let's see, what day is it? You know, it actually doesn't matter what day, does it? Keeps firing. Gets it all back for a, basically a flat. And Luna was choppy. And all of that is just setting him up for what he really wants to trade, which is Solana. He's becoming a Solana trader and... Brings in three and a half and leaves 30 on the table. <sighs> Santa Maria. Uh, here's my brother on Tesla. This is yesterday. I'm believing, yeah. Uh, PSR flippage, 
uh, standard entry on the Z3 breakout, piece our flip, standard to our battle drill and battle drill and battle drill and standard exit for 13.7 R today. That's what triggered our friend, we'll call him Trader X, uh, to learn the pattern in 15 minutes and then trade it with Cliff. See my opening remarks. Um, and Constantine con continues to specialize in gold dollar spot. Look at that nice orderly wave. Oh my goodness. PSAR flip, standard risk, 3R to here, Kata 2 entry, 4.6, SSC, 4.5, uh, 13R. Find the mover, trade the mover, manage your risk. More on the uh, gold dollar spot. Takes the rollover PSR flip for 1.5, PSR flip for 6R with a 1, 2, 3 exit. Find the mover, trade the mover, manage your risk. This is really good work in here. Span of control issues and other meetings prevents that one. Couple tightly controlled risks, but if you keep shooting, that one pays for those two. Net positive for the day. Carefully climbing the ladder and getting paid on both sides of that. Using alerts to guide between two different symbols. I also think you want to have your little, uh, your watch list over on one side and then maybe two, two tradable windows for tactical trading over here so you can keep an eye on what's moving. And then you pull the ones in that you want to actively trade based on, you see, uh, based on your inspection of what the market is doing. Uh, Matt B. is working hard on his uh, getting his um, charts set up in a way that is satisfying. Uh, he's got some other things that maybe we aren't using, but which are aligned with his belief sets. Like um, he's, he's adding some like parallel insights into ATR percentage. Um, some other elements of the intermediate strength of trend, some RL30 slope stuff. So this looks like one that can be used uh, for, for stocking and measuring. So you can see that what he's got is a uh, two-year chart with one-day one, uh, one candles. So he's using this to kind of get his market view I think is how I'm reading that. And he's got his MACD down here. Notice the nice notice the nice turning points when it goes winter, spring, winter, spring. The second spring, as it fights its way through the Red River, is this move. It didn't fail further. And then as it breaks out into summer, right in here, that's your summer move. But as we already saw on the daily, this is becoming a little problematic rolling over. It may have gotten too far too fast. But that's a visually appealing display. So, you know, there are screens for reconnaissance or scouting. There's screens that we might use for framing. And there's screens that we might use for execution or assassination. And how complex or simple they are is really geared to what the purpose of your activity is. 
that maybe if you're doing reconnaissance and scouting and you're not live in the market, you can afford a busier screen. But as we're seeing, when it comes time for execution, you want the minimum indicator set on so that you can focus strictly on just the information you need to execute decisions. So this is Matt doing the work, uh, getting it tuned to his visual learning style. Uh, here's Nolan. I, I want you to start practicing the SSCs and the K2s. We should be hitting these routinely. First leg, second leg, third leg. That's a reasonable effort at the short. Good scratch. This should stop and reverse. Gets paid a little bit, a little bit. This should be a stop and reverse. Here's your SSC here instead of here. Then that gets paid, and then that gets paid. So that's pretty good. But I want you to start crushing this. You know, with three minutes between bars, you should be able to reset and uh, get into the trading frame of mind. Uh, the German DAX. So I see this one. I'd like to see you hit, wait for the PSAR flip and then take that entry here. And then instead of two false starts, you get one good start. And if you take this exit at the edge of the dragon, that re-entry is perfect. That's a pretty good exit. That's a great re-entry. This PSAR flip, we should be nailing it with the idea of coming back to the VWAP. This was about three bars late. That should be here. Um, that's a good scratch. That's a good re-entry, good scratch. This lower highs, we should be here. Certainly here as it crosses the VWAP. Those were both two shorts that were indicated. And if this gets you out, then this should get you back in as you did. And if you're that far in the money, you can't let that go to zero. you got to get paid somewhere in this stretch of terrain. You want that to be positive. Unless this was your ex, I just noticed that. Good uh, tight loss. A little slow in the entry, but still pretty good. Great re-entry. Um, we should be doing better than this on that on that chart in there. Um, this looks more like the normal volatility we're used to seeing in the Aussie, and um, a little bit of choppitude. gets paid that covers all of these quick scratch good one now this is where he's learning to to do the 2R battle drill ads and then instead of 5 this could have been 15 but that's a pretty good day at work even on the one These are all reasonable scratches, but that feels like it wore you out, and then we missed the, the one we're supposed to get. And then, even if that gets you out, the fact that it didn't fail further, yeah. But he had some other distractors, that's legit. So, just a little bit of timing you know, the, the moves of the day were not hitting, and that made the difference. There's nothing wrong with those other ones, though. Quick scratch, two quick losses, and that's where the PSAR flip re-entry. Stop taking a break. Learn to suffer. Good second entry, and... 
that should be an exit in here either right there at the edge of the dragon or very good patience and if you do get out here or in here then that's a re-entry but that's a good job trust in the piece are uh, after strong surges we have to be ready for those <laughs> that's the you you by this time over here you you have to say that surge is over and it it has pulled me in it gave back a full one third somewhere in here like when the green turns to red like your indicator is showing that's where you got to be short and and you double this today some constantine magic here on the dax from the open PSAR flip, standard risk, standard exit at the PSAR flip, so that's one, two, three, four. The gold dollar spout, uh, spot. You wonder why he's specializing in that, because it moves. And he doesn't even get the SSC, he just waits for the Kata 2. We could be adding here and here, but there's nine. Man, he is murdering that one. So this standard pattern you wouldn't know it to look at that, that that was monthly charts unless you looked at it, you know. Patterns are fractal. Trust the PSR. The dragon is your friend. The R10 is your price. 2R is significant. And you ought to just study this one and ask yourself, what are your beliefs concerning how long it takes to learn and trade a pattern. Now, granted, uh, Trader X has been trading for 35 years, managing money at a large professional level. Um, but the rules are still the rules. He's assembling a team of other pro money managers. And uh, if we run out of slots for coaching, that's why. Because these guys are going to pay top dollar for our time. Uh, my brother, I think, is going to do full-time coaching. Uh, he's got a fire in his belly to do that and is a pretty darn good teacher. I'd encourage you to get on his calendar while there's slots. All right, that's everything we got for today. Nice work, fellas. Just, uh, you might want to take a snapshot of that one and uh, make it a flashcard. Remember Boeing tomorrow. Boeing and the medals. Wow. What a day tomorrow's going to be. Ciao for now.